Welcome to lesson three. This is um, this week's in-class uh, tutorial, or opening tutorial, I guess, on how to get started on this. You've got two drawings today to download from the shared resources or uh, class resources folder and put into your own subfolder within your on your S drive. For that, the the two we've got are Lesson 3 ICA and Lesson 3 ICA 2, are the names of the files. They're both DWG files. All right, from that, this is the first one you'll be working on. And today we're going to start out with a bunch of modification commands. And so last week we were focused more on drawing new lines. And this week we were focusing on how to modify those lines, things that have already been drawn, making adjustments to it, trimming things up, making them look nice. Uh, through there, scaling, chamfer, fillets, um, we got scaling, doing arrays, rotating things around just to make our life easier so we don't have to redraw everything each time. And then we'll start layers, and layers is super powerful. Uh, we use it for lots of things in there. And then we'll also, the second uh, file, we're looking at viewports. And so you can change how you look at uh, your drawing and how you work in your drawing to make it more efficient, uh, quicker to work with through there. The, um, so we'll start here. This is in the first ICA drawing that we're working with today. <clears throat> I should note that um, if you if you ever need help with anything, just remember, look down here at the command line. This is always going to tell you what the what AutoCAD is waiting for. When you start a command, it'll tell you what it's, what it's expecting, and it also gives you options down here. If I remember last week, we were doing the um, ellipse command. If you click down here, you could rotate ellipses, and that's where that option was hidden, kind of hidden down here. If you said look for it. And then also don't forget that you can always say F1 no matter what, and up will pop a help screen like this, and you can type in uh, command. And oops, if you want to search for information about the break command, that's the first one we're going to do about how to break things. Here's the break, the command, and it'll tell you a little bit about it, and quite often has a link to additional resources and help on there. So that's one place to find help. The other thing to, to go to is don't forget you've got a textbook, right? And so I just, this is a, Paul pulled this one up. Uh, this is my electronic version of our textbook. And here's the break command. Uh, we're in, um, the, we're in chapter, uh, what chapter are we in? <laughs> this week, I think 9 and 10, 9, 10, 11. I'm just looking at the instructions there. Um, this will also tell you how to run the break command. So here's, all right, some basic options. If you go to the next page, here's some more advanced options. And here is how to use two points, right? Just like that. I'd forgotten how to do this since last year. So I just was reading this to remind myself how to work it. So don't forget you have those options. If you're struggling, uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense uh, to you or how it's working, right? Uh, this book is really good. This book does a, a good job filling out all the details. It's more uh, more complete, if you ask me, than the F1 help screen uh, is on there. So it's got more detail in it. If you, uh, I think if, if you followed some of the links on the F1, it might get to the same point, but um, don't forget you have the textbook and you can pop that open there. The, the first First piece we've got here is the, I say this break command, and we're going to give this a shot and break here. And it's going to ask you to select the object. So I'm looking down here in the command line. Okay, select object. Well, what am I going to break? I want to break this line because I want to make this piece, zoom in here, look this, make that piece look like this. All right, that's what this red arrow is saying is take this and make it look like that. Now we're not going to touch, touch this, but we're just going to do this command on this piece to make it look like that. So we're going to break this one first, first, and it's starting. So I clicked once and it broke it there. And now I'm going to say, well, if I want to do a two point break, which I just read about in my textbook, I'm going to hit F down here. So here's my option. Remember down in the command line, I can click that with my mouse or I can hit F to select that. Okay. So this is, where's my first break right there. And my second break is there. Now I look at, I made a very clean break right, right at the crossing line. Otherwise, I'd probably have a little piece uh, hanging off one side or the other. And um, yeah, that's not, that's not as great through there. So I'm going to repeat the command. I just hit space bar again. And it comes up. What am I going to break? I'm going to break this thing. And I'm going to break... Uh, I'm going to do the first point here. I'm going to do the second point there. And I've got my break line. And then I'll do that on those two lines, and then I'll then I'll be done with it there. Right. 
the and I'll do the same over here. You're just breaking out these pieces there so that it'll look like that when you're done. <coughs> over here, it's getting you to, to break the circle uh, in pieces. I'm going to do that one. Right, let's do break. And what do we want to break? I'm going to select the object. I'm, I'm breaking the circle. And do I want to... The, where I picked it, is that where I wanted to start to break it? No, I wanted to do F for first point, and I'm going to break it here, and I'm going to swing over to here, and break it there. And the book will uh, note it is that it breaks things in a counterclockwise direction. So if you, this was the first point, and you move that direction, it breaks it in that direction. And so you've, that's the gap I've got there. <coughs> if I had picked this point first and then gone there, it would have left that line and broken the rest of the circle, which would have been a little bit funny. All right, four there. So then, then this one, you start with these four circles and you use the break command to get this shape out of it. And so, um, right, look at the, look at this, where, the, where these circles are and how they touch and decide which pieces you need to break out of that or cut out of it to get that shape. And that's what your goal is uh, with that one through there. Next command we've got is the extend command, the extend and and trim. Um, I use these all the time and you can type in extend or they are right here up in the modify screen. Again, I'm in civil 3D, but I have my workspace switched over to drafting the annotation. So it looks like standard AutoCAD in here. This is drawing new stuff. We were working in there last week. This week we we're working in the modify commands mostly right through here. Um, extend and trim are here up on the top in this uh, command line through there in the menu. And here's the extend, right? And if I wanted to switch back, here's a drop down arrow and I could, could do that. But here's extend. Here's my options. So options are down here in the command line. Boundary edges, crossing mode, project, okay? And I want to extend these lines to make it look like that. And extend has gotten actually easier to use than it used to be. It used to have to select everything. Now I just hover over it and uh, maybe it's AI. I don't know. It kind of assumes it knows what you want to do. So, okay, I want to extend that. And then I hover over this one. No, extend that, extend that, extend that, right? Um, if you don't like what it's showing you, then don't don't click your left but, you know, left mouse button. And so whoop, that was it. So I just extended all those. I was just hovering over them and then clicking and doing the left mouse Click. If I if I'm still I'm still in the commands, the command is still active down there until I hit escape. And you can see it's still trying to extend anything I'm hovering over, um, which I don't need to extend anymore. So I hit escape, and I'm done from that. Over here, I need to take this shape and make it look like this little sugar or bread loaf, I guess it's what they call that shape through here. So I'll use extend. So I'm going to do extend again. I'm going to extend those up there. And now I'm going to switch over to trim. Use this drop down. One, go to trim, hover, hover, and I got it. Right, do that. So there's my extend and trim. Uh, you can do the same thing here, trim those out so you get to that shape. Over here, you're trimming out all these crossing lines on the inside until it looks like that uh, down there. Uh, over here, um, yeah, you're going to do trim on this as well. Uh, trim all these off until it looks like the other shape. So you're just practicing using those tools as you go around. Do that. Uh, next down is, um, or the next, <coughs> excuse me, next line of, of commands is chamfer. And chamfer is um, paired with fillets and also blending curves. And so chamfer is this option up here. Again, I'm up here in this toolbar uh, or menu uh, screen across here. Here's my chamfer. And here's all my options. Right from that, and it says chamfer these corners at 0.25 and 0.25. Well, where's that option at? Well, that option is under distance. Uh, your textbook would tell you where to find it right through there. Chamfer right now is at zero. If I chamfer this at zero and zero, it would look just like a uh, right angle corner. You're not going to even see any change into it. But I'm going to put it in 0.25. And my second distance is also 0.25. And now when I come down here and chamfer that line connected to that, you had to click twice. There's my chamfer, right? And if you were to measure how much it cut off each edge, it's 0.25. And so that's that chamfer. Hit spacebar to do it again. That one, that one. It remembered your last settings, your last used settings. And it will just keep repeating those. I'm just hitting spacebar to repeat the command each time. Spacebar, click first line. Whoops. Too many lines. Hit escape. Space bar to do it again. 
Click the first line, click the second line. Got it. One more time. And there, there's my chamfer. Got 0.25. Now uh, you do it again. So spacebar chamfer, change distance. I could click with it. Click with my mouse, change this to a one. And what do I want the second one to be? If I want to accept the default value that's inside these brackets, I just hit enter. And there we go. And now I'm to just do that all the way around again, just like we did before. All right, from there. Now I'm going to do fillet. Fillet is uh, sharing a spot, I guess, on the menu with the chamfer. And so now I hit the fillet button. What do I want to fill it? And first thing I can do, though, is I can change my radius, and then I can change how it trims things. And I can change that after you've, you've uh, filleted things that you uh, make them into a polyline. I'm not going to do though, but I'm going to do uh, radius, and so I click on that. What's my radius going to be? Radius is going to be one. And am I going to trim? And right now, do I want to trim or no trim? No trim leaves the original line work in place, and trim, uh, it's it's like the trim command. It cuts off the original line work, and you're going to see the difference here in a second. So I'm going to turn trim on, and what am I going to do a radius on? I'm going to do it on that. Hit spacebar, repeat the command. Spacebar, repeat the command. Spacebar, and then you can see work. I'll let you do the rest of those. And if I do spacebar and repeat the command, and now I switch trim to no trim, and still has a radius of one, it'll remember your last radius. So you don't have to type that in. This is what it looks like when you don't trim. So that's the difference in trim versus no trim. Right, so just go around and do all those. Through there, we've also got scale. Scale is up here in the toolbar, and so here's my scale. Scale says what, so the first thing it's asking is what object? What are you trying to scale? I want to scale this, and I can see the all highlights. If this were individual elements, and I wanted to scale all of it, I'd have to click each one of those individual elements. And you can keep selecting things. It'll let you keep selecting things until you're, you're done selecting. So when I'm done selecting, I hit the space bar or enter. And now it says, where do you want to scale about? What point is our reference point that we're going to start from? They call it the base point. And up here, I told you use this as your base point. So I'm going to click that as my base point. And now you can see it's got a little gray outline in the background of where the original shape was. And now I can do a dynamic scale. I can just drag this around or I can type in the scale factor. And that's what we're supposed to do. So I type in two and there it is. So I scaled it up by two. I made it twice the, the size it was. Next commands are lengthen. Lengthen commands are up here under modify, and there's extra modify commands that don't fit <laughs> in the toolbar uh, or workspace up here. So I am going to, that, this is the lengthen command. And again, if you hover over these, it'll tell you what it is. If you hover long enough, it gives you real brief instructions of what it does and how it works. And, or you can hit F1 at this point, and it'll bring up the information about that command for you. So I'm going to hit lengthen. And now I have all these options down here in the command bar. And um, I want to do delta. So I'll do, I can type in DE or I can click on delta. And lengthen right end by delta of 5. And so I'm going to type in 5. And I'm going to click on the right end of this. And it extended it 5 units. There we go. Um, this one is lengthen right end by 150. And so um, escape, start the command over. And I'm going to do a then right in by 150% is the next one. So now I'm going to type in 150% and click on that. And it's a little bit longer, right? Escape to finish the command, spacebar to repeat the command. Now I'm going to use uh, LinkedIn to write in a total units of 25. And so to go total, which means the total uh, distance of the line is going to be that. That so that should be what you get there from those three commands. All right, moving on. A line command is kind of a cool command. I don't use it very often, but when you need it, it is handy. So we're going to align, and this is pretty cool. Is first thing is what do you want to align? So it's asking you down here select which objects, and I can select this object. Well, that didn't that didn't select this whole white shape, this whole L shape here. I want the whole shape, so I can click each one of these lines, and it'll just keep adding to it. Or I can window around things very carefully. I don't want to move those red numbers. And once everything is highlighted, I hit spacebar or enter to say I'm done selecting. And now it's now it asks for the next piece of information, which is align your source points. And so I'm going to align this number one to 
that number one. I'm going to align this number two to that number two and this number three to that number three. It boom, moves it. All right, and we'll do the same thing over here. You're going to pick this whole shape and then you're going to align this number one to that number one and this number two to that number two. And then you're done. Uh, down here, we've got two things moving. We have this shape is moving one and two is going to move over here to one and two. And then this shape, three and four, are going to move up here to three and four. <coughs> so I'll let you guys move those around. Uh, over here, the top is this a de the description of what you're supposed to do, which is you're supposed to take all this jumble of parts and make the shape out of it. And that's what we're doing. And we're going to use the move and copy commands. So here's, so leave this top half alone. You're going to move these parts and put them over here and using the move and copy commands. So I'm going to use move. So let's say I want to move that part. So it says move selected objects. And where do you want to start there? I'm going to move it over here. Put it right there, right through that. Um, now I want to do um, some kind of move this one. So I'm hit space bar to re and I'm going to move that object, just that one alone this time. Sure. And I am now it says, what point do I want to grab onto it? Where am I going to pick a base point? I want to, I want to put this right there, smacked up right on the end of that line. And so I'm going to use this as my base point. Uh, using that using the object snap to get it and i'm going to move over here and snap it to the end of that and so forth and so on in the end i can also use copy here's the copy command and obviously there's four circles i only have one so let's copy it so if i select this is the thing i want to copy do i want to select anything else to copy right now no so i hit space bar what point am I going to copy it from? Well, I think the center of the circle would be a great point to grab onto. So I'm going to pick the center. And now when I move it over here, I can drop it. And then it'll let you do a bunch of copies all at once until you hit escape and finish it out. So I can just draw these in here and keep drawing it and hit escape and finish it out right from that. So that's move and copy commands. Both of them ask for base points when you're moving and copying. So it's a little different than like a copy and paste, like control C, control V thing you might be used to in other programs. In AutoCAD, it gives you very exact ways to tag something at an, at an exact point or exact reference and move it over. And so it's always asking for that base point first. Uh, mirror command is up next. This is our mirror command. And first it's going to ask, select objects. What do we want to mirror? Well, I want to mirror this and turn it into this shape. So I'm going to collect all of this using the little window. Left click. Um, and then move over and left click again to finish it. So those are all selected. Once I'm done selecting objects, I hit the space bar. What's my mirror line? What line do I want it to mirror about? And I'm going to just pick this over here as my mirror line. Oop, there it is. Got the first one done. Hit space bar. I'm done with that command. Well, now I've got half of it. Let's mirror it one more time. And if I hit space bar, it repeats the command. What am I selecting? I'm going to select this whole thing. So left click, drag down here. Left click again. I didn't hold the button down while I clicked, so it made the box, not the squirty shape. Um, so that's all the objects I want to. Now it asks, what's my mirror line? My mirror line is along there. Ooh, there it is. And I'm done. Oh, sorry. I should have hit it. I should have hit to finish it off. Well, you saw it work uh, through that. We've also got polar array um, that we can make arrays. We can take one thing and move it around uh, in a set and... I accidentally, I was practicing on this earlier and I forgot to erase them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, take my word for it. You can do polar, <laughs> if I can just erase those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's, I'll just e delete all of, uh, it keeps popping up in polar array. I'm going to close the array. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. I got it reset. There we are. So here's my here's my point, and I can oops, if I do array polar and select the object. I want to select that one, right? And if I'm done, is that the only thing I want to move? I can hit enter, and now it says a what point polar array means you're going to circle around a point. At what point do you want to start from? I'm going to start from this center. And boom, it shows this. And then, ah, oh, are we done? No. Does it look like that? Not quite. Right. This is, it did a six unit polar array and we want an eight unit polar array. But it brings up this whole nice menu um, bar up here at the top. 
And that's what I would use, right? In the old days, we had to come down here and we had to figure out all these uh, different options. <coughs> a lot of the newer commands now, we just have up here in the ribbon, I think that's what they call this. We have a ribbon that's just about that tool. And so that's six items. Well, I don't want six, I want eight items. So I'm typing eight and does that look right? Sure it does. And so I can close the array, hit that green check mark, and I'm done. That's all I needed to do there. Now we can also do array over here. We can do a rectangular array. And so I can do a rectangular array. Type in that command. That's the command name there. What do I want to move? I want to move this thing. So I'm going to select all of it. And I'm done selecting. Hit the space bar. And it pops up a whole bunch. Is that what I want to do? Probably not. Here's my ribbon. And it says I'm doing four columns by two rows. But down here it says I want two rows and three columns. So this has to be a two. The columns up here, boop, boop, come on. It has to be a three. What's the space in between them? So I want 1.5 units between rows. So here's my between dimension, 1.5. And then I come over here to the columns. And what's my distance between columns? Two. And hit two, hit enter, and there we go. So there's my array, and that looks good. All right, so I'm going to uh, close the array there. So now I've got that array done all right, through there, but I will now I want this in all four quadrants. I want this on all four edges through there. Well, I remember I know the, oops, the mirror, excuse me, the mirror command. There it is. Hit the mirror command. I'm going to have all of that. And I'm going to mirror about that line. I got it. And done. But I hit space bar, do it one more time. I can mirror all of these, grab them all. I don't want to mirror this line though, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on that, and it unselects it. All the rest of those are selected. Hit the space bar, then done selecting. Now it's asking for where's my mirror line. My mirror line is right there, and I'm done. So I've mirrored that all the way around. Hit enter, and we are all set. All right. Over here, you can do polar array again, and you'll be polar arraying around the center of this little circle, and you'll array that around six items, 60 degrees in between them. I'll just let you, uh, we practiced that one already, so you can try it on that. Moving on, here's the offset command. This is the offset command up here. This is what the button looks like for it. Here's the array command, by the way, if you didn't want to type in the, uh, uh, the command name. Here's rectangular array, here's polar array. You can do a path array, that's a newer one. On there, you can rotate things, you can stretch things out, uh, and so forth. But here's offset, offset's right there. Um, didn't I clicked it, didn't look like anything happened, but it's asking you a question, which is specify the distance, or are you gonna click and tell me where you want it to go through? Well, I'm gonna do it by distance, and I'm gonna do my distance uh, one, one unit, and I'm gonna click this, and I'm going to go to the outside, and I'm going to do it again. It's going to do it twice. So, there we go. Um, and we're going to do it one unit. Now we're going to go to the inside. So click it, and if uh, it, it'll use the last distance um, that you that you had. So it's this is the default one. So I just hit enter to accept that one, and I'm going to go to the inside. And then I just hover on the inside, and it it moves. It'll offset toward whichever direction. Um, you are hovering your mouse on. So I could, if I hover to the outside, it would go to the outside. If I hover to the inside, it goes to the inside. Uh, you can also go the through offset. And so if I do offset and I type in T for through, I can say I want to I offset this through that point. And that's how we do that on there. Uh, and the last thing in, in this part of the ICA is using the layer dialog. And if we come back to home screen up here, here's my layer properties box. There's a whole chapter on layers. I recommend you go through it to figure out how to do this. This is going to be the quick and dirty way. Just you just watch how I do it. But there's a lot of information in that chapter about it. I'm going to make this dialog box bigger. This is where having two screens is really helpful. I know the lab doesn't have that, so I won't. Um, I'll do this all in a single one. These are all really um, uh, compressed. So you can't read <laughs> what, what you should, each of these columns is, but I will I'll expand these so you know what it uh, what kind of what their meaning is. There we go. Just enough so we can read them. Here's the name of the layer. And we don't have very many layers in here. 
my instructions is the one we were on before. <coughs> so we open this layer dialog box. If we want to make a new layer, it's this little, looks like a cake layer is up here, I guess, with a little star next to it, a little starburst. That means you're going to make a new one. You can freeze layers, which means you turn them off. They're still in there. Uh, well, actually, on and off is slightly different than freeze. Um, but in both ways, you typically don't see them anymore. So you can turn a layer off or you can freeze it, and then you wouldn't see it. Um, but it still exists, and that helps us in fancier drawings, complicated drawings. We freeze things or turn layers off so we aren't confused, and we can make things simpler. So while we're working, um, we're not being confused by all the background lines, nor are we likely to snap to those lines and they get in the way. I right, through that. And then when we're done, we turn them back on if we want to print or something. And sometimes, um, like I say, in, in highway design work, particularly where I'm, most of my experience has been, um, I'll, I'll have construction layers that only I see. And so I'm dr drafting stuff in and, and putting my geometry in there and seeing how it fits up, or I have different options I'm looking at. But I don't want anybody else to see those, so I just make a layer for myself, and then I hide it. And turn them off and then they don't come out into prints uh, when we're done but it gives me uh, it's kind of like doing sketches and I have a layer I can just sketch on and, and draw on some and drafting called the scratch layer so I have a scratch layer and I'll work on that so here I open up the this layer drawing box in here and the first thing it says to do is create a layer named dashed and so I'm going to here click this uh, one with a little star on it, and that creates a new layer down here. And it just pops it in here. I'm going to name it dash. I just highlight that and type in here, and it, uh, it's shown in all caps. I guess I'll do it in all caps. You don't really, you know, that's really important. You can choose. So there's my new layer called dashed and set the color to red. So if I just click on this color here, and I'm going to pick this red down here, these are the basic colors, and here's um, you can do all sorts of tints and shades and all that. And if you know the number, you can type the number in, which is um, the RGB values for that color. So we're just going to go to red, and it's just a basic color, and which is um, the R for red is 255, which is the highest value you can have. And then zero green, zero blue, so it's a pure red color. There we go. So I've made it red. Um, and, and set the color to red and the line type to dash. So here's line type. If I click on this where it says continuous, I can change it over to dashed. Click OK. So now I've got dashed on there. <coughs> I could also change how thick the line is. That's line weight. I can make, uh, describe whether it's transparency or not. It has a transparency set to it. it we're going to ignore that. The little printer icon here is, is showing you now it, if you try to print this out, it won't print that layer. You can see it, but it won't print. Uh, so those scratch layers, um, when I'm doing sketching, doing design work, I'll turn, I'll usually make those layers as non-print layers so that so no one can accidentally print my layers out and it would look awful from that. If you're ever plotting something and it isn't showing up when you print it out, but you can see it on your screen, check this box. See if this is, see if this thing is checked sometimes by accident, like you're trying to change the color, you accidentally click this little printer icon and turn it off. Uh, I've seen that happen more than once. So that's not uncommon. All right, so now I've made my layer and there it is, but it is not active. It's not active until I click this one with the little green check mark. Now it's the active layer. And now if I drew anything, it's going to be on that layer. So I can show you here. And now if I draw a line, there's my, there's my line. And it is red and it is dashed. And it will be on that layer. So if I click on this, it will be on that layer. Hit escape. Get out of there. And let's erase it. There we go. Okay. And so I created a layer named dash and I set the color to red and the line type to, to dash. And then you're going to create other layers, one called center line and uh, so forth. And um, that should say layer, not lawyer. Um, create a layer named thick and you set the color to green. And then you're going to set the line weight over here. And you just click on that and you'll scroll down and set it to 0.7. That's a big thick line. All right through that. And then you are going to change these layers to match the ones you just made. So this dashed one, this should be that. So I'm going to uh, select that layer, and I want to move it to my new layer. And well, how do I do that? Right. So if this is if dash is my current layer, um, there's a couple ways to do it. I there's an option down here which is over that. 
which is change whatever you've selected and move it to the current layer. So I click there and now it's on the dashed layer. And so that's under this drop down. And it's this one here, it changes it to that. The other way to do it is if you hover, if you select your layer and then use this drop down box, it'll show you all the layers uh, available and you can pick which one you want it to be. Maybe I want it to be green. So I just change it to the green. You're not supposed to do that. That was just a demonstration. But that's another way to do it. In a big file, you may have 400 layers or something in there, and it's going to be hard to find the one you want. So this is easy when you've got 20 layers. It gets a lot harder when you've got lots in there. And so after you create your layers uh, per instructions over here, you can use that to change those layers. And that's the first ICA drawing. The second one that you're supposed to do is this one. And I'm going to get rid of this dialog box. I don't need it anymore. Uh, over here, your second folder is making viewports, and so you can see things differently. And according to your instructions, uh, you're going to use the vport command, and you're going to change what's in here. You don't actually have to change anything in this drawing. Uh, you're just going to make viewports out of it. And viewports is vports. And it pops up, and it says, well, what do you want to do? You're in model space, and what do we want to look like? Well, if you look at the instructions, uh, you need one big one, one big viewport on the left, and two small viewports on the right. Well, what are my options? Well, I can have one viewport. Well, that's what I've already got. I can do two viewports. I get side by side. I can do two horizontal, one above the other. I can do three, which is two little ones on the left, one big one on the right. Still not what I want. I can do three with on the left, one big one on the left, two on the right. That is what I want. That is what the instructions say to do. So I'm going to say, okay, and guess what? Now I've got three little windows. All right, from that. In this window, if I click over here, I'm in this window. I can pan, I can zoom in and out, and it doesn't touch anything over here. So if I want to look in this room, Don Burke's room, apparently, office, and make edits to that uh, on a larger scale so I can see it well, and I, um, but then at the same time, I can still see the whole picture over here. I can still see what's going on there. That's how we, that's Routinely, how we use these viewports is is to we, we can get some detail that we need um, without losing track of where we are in the big picture over here. And I can zoom this one. If I click inside that box, it highlights. I can zoom around in it and scroll in and out and see what's going on in that. And according to the instructions, this one, we were supposed to be zoomed out. Put that back over there. This one, we're supposed to be zoomed in. Excuse me. Um, and I'm not sure where we were supposed to be zoomed in at. It's like this office block, something like that. Uh, kind of like that. And then this one down here, we are zooming in on someone's uh, specific office. Maybe it was Don Burke's office through that. So, um, and you're going to save it and you're done. Then you're, you've saved the file and you've shown it. You've created the, the windows, the viewports, and you have been shown your proficiency on zooming in and out and looking at them, and that's all you need to do for that, and that's the ICA, and then you're on to your homework, and that should be a good start uh, good, uh, for getting this started in this week's lesson.